Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. The domains of warfare or the military domains, what exactly do people mean when they use that term? It's a simple topic and yet one that's really important as well. So domain obviously means place, area. So a domain of warfare is essentially an area, a type of area in which war is waged. The three traditional types of warfare domains are therefore obvious. Land, water and air. These are the three domains in which countries have been fighting for a century. But there are two new domains as well that have been added to our understanding of war. Cyberspace and outer space as in the internet and the stars are also now considered areas in which wars can and will be fought. So there are five military domains totally. So let's look at them one by one. The first and easiest is obviously land warfare. This is the primary type of warfare that we've seen throughout the ages. Human beings, as you all obviously know, are terrestrial creatures, as in we live on land. So it only makes sense that most of our wars are fought on land as well. Most of the terms we use in warfare, infantry, cavalry, siege, all of those are a direct result of how armies fight on the land. Most of the great conquerors that you study about, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Napoleon, they were all predominantly land-based conquerors and land-based generals because terrestrial warfare has always been the sort of the form of war having the most direct impact on any society's life. Other people can take over the seas, they can take over the skies. But while you might notice all that, it wouldn't affect you on a day-to-day -day basis the way it would when someone controls your land. So fighting on this domain also tends to lead to the most casualties because you're fighting where the people actually live, what they have an emotional connection to, which gives it a special sense of importance among all the military domains. The second is water, naval, maritime warfare. This has become increasingly important over the last few centuries with the age of sail and the age of steam and all that. While land warfare has been the metric by which tangible things like territory are measured, the sea is meant for something even grander, geopolitics and power. As the world got more interconnected after the industrial revolution especially, this became even more crucial because even though maritime trade had always been the backbone of global trade, it also then became the key to empire. It's no coincidence that all the great military powers from the 18th century onwards have been major maritime powers as well. Because if you get to control the trade routes and you get to control the choke points, you can eventually decide the power balance of the world itself if you have a large enough navy. Third, we have air as a domain of warfare. Out of the three traditional domains, this is obviously the newest. And because of that, it also has the most mystique and glamour surrounding it. The air domain in many ways is even more relevant than its two predecessors now in military doctrine because of how well the superpowers have been able to use it. A large part of US military policy now is geared towards using force through the air domain. You only have to look at their recent major strikes to see that. Whether it's drone strikes in Pakistan and Yemen or the assassination of Qasim Soleimani, this is the current face of external American power. The Russians have used the air domain a lot as well. Most of their involvement in the Syrian conflict, for instance, is based on airstrikes, with very little support being provided from the ground or the sea. India and Pakistan even had a military engagement over the air a few years ago. So it's a very relevant and important domain. Those are the three traditional ones. Let's look at the new additions. There's obviously cyber warfare, which is the conduct of war online through cyberspace. I've already done a video on this, so I don't want to rehash that too much. Let's just say that there's an extremely busy domain in terms of war with billions of dollars being lost every year because of the damage caused by this. The one advantage that comes here is that so far, just so far, it's predominantly non-violent, although there's absolutely no evidence that it will stay this way. We could soon start seeing the norm shifting into more violent forms of kinetic cyber attacks, which actually do cause death and destruction. This is conceptually the trickiest domain out of the lot as well, 
because at least with the others we are dealing with actual physical territory where actual people or weapons or missiles or whatever clash but here there's none of that navigating through it to figure out which part is an act of war and which isn't that itself is a task that requires experts because it can get so confusing and often the experts themselves get confused as well and finally we have the newest domain of warfare something which people say isn't even a domain of warfare yet we're just calling it that because it sounds cool once again i've already done a video on space warfare so i don't want to add stuff that i've already mentioned what i will say is that there are a number of reasons why countries might want to fight in space once we actually have the technology to do so astro mining will be a huge billion dollar industry in the future as in mining for precious minerals and stones in asteroids and other planets so there's likely to be a lot of disputes over jurisdiction hey you can't mine there that asteroid belongs to us you can't conduct mining operations here we have jurisdiction on this planet and things like that countries are also working on anti satellite missiles which can disable the communication grids of their enemies instead of having to physically destroy them so those might be used in future wars as well so that's my quick overview of military domains it's important for us to know this because it's important for us not just to know why and how countries fight wars but also where they do it and while distinctions like land air water while that might seem like common sense classifications to us the new domains teach us a lot about where the experts think warfare is heading they teach us a lot about the types of wars that your children and your grandchildren will have to worry about some day and that is certainly an important topic for all of us to think about for their sake even if not for ours if you like content like this please don't forget to share and subscribe thank you take care and i'll see you soon